Hello and welcome to the Blank Cover Network. I'm BCV Dom and if you like action figures, comic books or geek culture in general then you my friends have come to the right place. Today we are looking at action figures, in particular WWE Elites. I've got two brand new figures which I'm going to do an overview of here today. So let's get started. Let's kick things off by talking about the best there is the best there was and the best there ever will be. That's right, in case you haven't guessed from my t-shirt, we're talking about Bret the Hitman Hart, one of the most praised and lauded pro wrestlers of all time. And his action figures tend to sell out and sell out fast. So let's take a look at the Elite Collection, Bret Hitman Hart from Survivor Series. A Little bit of history for you. This Survivor Series that they're talking about is Survivor Series 1996, where he went up against Stone Cold Steve Austin for the very first time. Bret Hart had had a much deserved break from the WWF, and Stone Cold had rapidly become one of the biggest heels in the company. And so when Bret Hart came back, he took on the biggest heel he could, which was Stone Cold Steve Austin. The two of them had instant chemistry and would go on to have a rivalry that both would praise in years to come. This was the only time that Bret Hart wore this orange sort of hint on his singlet. Every other time since he'd had the pink and black attack start for gosh since his tag team days with Jim the Anvil Neidhart. So it's kind of special and unexpected that Mattel would choose this design to go for for their new elite. So I'm a huge Bret Hart fan. He's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. In fact, if you listen to our podcast, Blank Cover Podcast, you'll hear me talk about him every now and then, even though we mostly talk about comics and action figures, I'll still find a time to slip in the excellence of execution and why he's so good. So I was very happy when I saw that this new figure was being released and couldn't wait to buy him. It makes sense then, we should open him up and take a look. I have a very small WWE Elite collection. Um, it's mostly because I only tend to buy, I'm not a completionist, so I'm not buying every single figure in a wave. I'm just sticking to the wrestlers that I admire the most or enjoyed their character the most. And so Bret Hart being one of my favorites, uh, that was a must that I'd have to get him. Okay, here we go. Bret Hart in the packaging. I already can tell you I like the boots. I like the boots a lot. Ooh, that's tricky. He's handcuffed to the packaging. That's his theme song, in case you didn't know. Okay, there we go. Bret Hart from Survivor Series 1996. He's got a little band, as you can see there. He's got a little band on his sunglasses just to keep them in place. So let's take them off and find out what happens to his shades. Nothing. Oh, they come off quite nicely. Okay, and they slip on well again. It's interesting, these shades are black. So I think that's um, his costume appropriate for the Survivor Series so that he's not wearing the specifically pink shades. He's got he's got the hands ready to do his classic cheer when he entered the ring. He always used to sort of go to the after um, getting into the ring. He used to, used to go towards the ropes, towards the camera, and kind of do that move. And that's really cool that they've got the hands ready in that position. I don't think we've had a Bret Hart action figure before now that's been in this position, but it does come with some other hands in the accessories. So we'll take a look at those as well. Pink chair. I don't think he ever had a pink chair, but two pairs of hands, four hands. -na 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 -na. No, that's a theme song. We've got two sets of hands, one of which, one set is kind of doing a, a bullhorn rock and roll kind of throw up symbol there, which I think Brett used to do when he'd, he'd sort of put one leg on the second rope, one on the first, and then throw that symbol up. And then the other's sort of your standard wrestling. Uh, the equivalent of trigger hands, I suppose. They've got an array of hands, but let's get back to the figure as well. On inspection, I said I really like the boots. I actually think the boots are a reuse, maybe, of potentially the exclusive, the Ringside Collectibles exclusive, where Bret Hart was in entirely pink. I think that was one of his Intercontinental Championship um, 
singlets, but this is a great action figure. I love the orange highlights and lining within this. That's so good. And actually, Bret Hart, he's got um, hearts uh, on the inside of his uh, trunks there. And I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he used to put those on and it was a heart for each of his kids. I think that's something he always used to do on all of his all of his costumes. Um, but this is a fantastic looking action figure. Some people have given it grief for the face sculpt, which we'll take a, a closer look at now. And actually, I can kind of... I, I genuinely don't mind it that much. I know some people really don't like it, but to me, it's it does look like Bret Hart. Um, and it's that slightly older Bret Hart when he had been... WWF champion a few times so it, it looks good to me it's he's got a new hair sculpt as well this is new um I think that's unlike any that they've used for the basic series or the elites correct me if I'm wrong but yeah this is a really cool looking action figure I wonder how well you could pose it putting someone in the sharpshooter but he's got good articulation there. He's got the good sort of elite hip bend, which you want. Sorry, the chest and rib bend, which you want for elites, because, you know, they're going to get punched in the stomach a few times, right? So this is, yeah, this is really cool. Oh, definitely. If you, okay, if you're on the fence about this figure, my advice, go out and buy it. So Bret Hart action figures always sell out. They always do, because his fan base is global he did that incredible thing where he was a heel when he went bad he was a heel in the u.s but still stayed a face in every other territory it was kind of incredible and so i think because of that even these decades later he's still got fans such as myself who've grown up into adulthood but are still fans of him so if you're on the fence about it buy this figure he is great i think the paint job that they've done is brilliant and also the elites they're getting Spider-Man. Um, the elites are getting much, much better. The true effects detail that they get with that system that Mattel are getting is really good. Um, yeah, excellent, excellent action figure. The best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Look, look it up. That -na 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 -na. I'm telling you, check it out. It's almost verbatim the theme song. Quick little message for you here. If you are enjoying this video, then please do click that like button. That helps us with the YouTube algorithm to reach more people with this video and our videos in general. And if you are enjoying this kind of content, then check out our podcast, Blank Cover Podcast. I've put a link in the description below, but we talk about comic books, action figures, just geek culture in general. I'm sure you'll love it. Okay, well, let's get back to it. Okay, so we said I do two action figures today and I'm a man of my word. So let's look at the second one. It is Warlord and it's Warlord in a very specific design. So it is not the Warlord from the 1992 rivalry with the British Bulldog. This was when he was in singles action and would go into events like the Royal Rumble wearing his guard chest plate and this staff that had a W at the top. We had that Warlord released in the WWE Elite's early 80s number. I think it was 82 or 81. And I actually, I did have that figure, but I sold him a while ago because I just didn't think he was quite as good as the new Elites we're getting now. So you can imagine my surprise when they announced that this guy was coming out, but in his tag team attire. If you'll remember from the early 90s, there was a borderline tag team turmoil Survivor Series match that opened Survivor Series and it was the heel team captained by Demolition and Mr. Fuji and they went up against the face team which was captained by the Powers of Pain, Barbarian and Warlord. And that team also included the Hart Foundation, Bret Hart and Jim the Anvil Neidhart. So that was a pretty short-lived tag team. In fact, in that match, Warlord and Barbarian, the Powers of Pain, actually turned heel, and Mr. Fuji jumped ship from Demolition to the Powers of Pain. I can't believe they chose, because it was such a limited tag run, they chose to make this version of the Warlord, but I was very excited by it because in that classic sort of 
Legion of Doom, Road Warrior style, they had cool face paint, which child me was very happy about. And retro nostalgia BCV Dom is like, ah, oh, this guy's just punching me right in the, in the retro feels. So let's open him up and take a look at Warlord. Oh, I forgot to show you. Uh, the back has very little on it. <laughs> it just says Warlord. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't really want to give us any bio or anything or even if he was included in another line there are no other wrestlers in his line it's just warlord there he is maybe he's an exclusive in the states is he an exclusive over there i don't know on canada or somewhere but over here he just came out with the survivor series line that bret hart and hulk hogan and bailey and uh keith lee are in he came out at the same time as them so anyway let's open them up see i really like the powers of pain but other than that survivor series match i don't really remember them doing much else okay warlord here we go he comes with <laughs> he, he's got two fists and he comes with sort of the equivalent of trigger hands wrestling trigger hands but let's get him out of this packaging i am reborn wow this is quite the action figure so my initial thoughts are great. I'm very happy with this. One thing, this was a pre-order, and I'm not sure if you can see, but right where it counts, over his right eye, there's a bit of a paint scuff there. So, a little disappointing. It looks like he started the match. You know how the paint would always wear out as the match went on? Just look at any of Ultimate Warriors matches. So, I'll go with that as the excuse, but, other than that, this is a pretty great looking figure. He's definitely got the size and the height build. I'll do, I mean, here, look, let's have a little comparison with Bret Hart here. You can kind of see he's got a little bit of height on him. Uh, and the attire, he's, he comes with a sort of tassel tassel harness I guess it's not just tassels tied around his bicep but actually he's got this kind of cage like I imagine that would, would have been leather as well as the um, chest plate that he's got here all all sort of dungeony and chains and things and actually on the back it says warlord although they haven't painted the W so our lord our oh lord it's not quite as aggressive so on the side it says warlord and on the other side it says we row pain we rot pain <laughs> i don't know i just don't know and he was sporting a two-tone haircut check that out warlord with black and brown so this is so this is a pretty great action figure. I like the size. He's kind of got the feel of Kane or Taker, you know, those slightly bigger action figures that Mattel have released. Um, nice articulation, nice swivel that you come to expect with the WWE Elites. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this action figure. I'll be really happy once they release Barbarian. I think if I had the two of them as a tag team like this, I'd then be on the lookout for a hopeful demolition trio or tag team in the future but for now warlord yeah that's a good action figure and that is everything thank you so much for watching dear viewer i really appreciate it brett the Hitman heart and warlord do check out our podcast blank cover podcast the link is in the description below and we'll see you soon